Hey, what's up, guys? It's Timothy here again, filming from my classroom. I'm um, having a great start to the school year. Super excited. Um, I'm going to go over some of the spoilers. We just got our first uh, official batch of um, Kaladesh spoilers. I know we've already seen one card here. Um, it should be right below Sahili's Artistry. And um, I just noticed there are a couple more. I did see Inventor's Fair last night, which I'll talk about. But the ones above, there's four or five spoilers. Um, I'm not going, I, I haven't seen them yet. Um, or I've seen them, but I haven't read them yet. So those will be blind. This one is not. So Inventor's Fair here is um, a legendary land. It's a rare. Uh, beginning of your upkeep, you if you control three or more artifacts, you gain a life. Taps for colorless, and then it has an ability on it. For four mana, you can tap and sack it. Search your library for an artifact. Reveal it, put it, on, put it into your hand, shuffle your library. And you can only activate the ability if you have three or more artifacts. So keep in mind, that's... um. That's, that's essentially a Metalcraft ability, and um, I don't know whether we should expect... I, I would say Metalcraft isn't really returning, otherwise why not keyword this as Metalcraft, right? But that's basically what it is, something that um, happens if you have three artifacts. Um, I can see Duretti players really wanting this in EDH, and uh, it seems like even a good limited card if it is a artifact-themed set where you can pick up artifacts really easily. Just passive life gain on a land is pretty good. It doesn't come in tapped either, so you can use that colorless right away. And then being able to tutor up an artifact seems really, really good. Um, you know, like a mini Kadoltha Forge Master or something like that without having to sack three artifacts. Just being able to turn this into any artifact in your deck seems amazing, but you do have to have a heavy artifact theme in your deck already. So, um, very similar to Kadoltha Forge Master in that you have to be running artifacts. You're not just gonna, you know, like tinker up the only artifact in your deck or something like that. But anyway, pretty cool. Um, one other note on this it says at the bottom, Story Spotlight. Um, I can't tell what that is. It looks like a fraction maybe um i i noticed this from the comments um on the card someone had pointed it out and i'm not sure why that's there or if this is a promo or alternate art or what but uh it is just something to keep in mind there so it's pretty interesting but anyway we're gonna go ahead and get into new spoilers these ones i haven't seen at all uh, i noticed we've got our planeswalker there but just um I'm gonna go ahead and see what we've got. Oh, new border here. Vehicle. All right, all right. <laughs> What's going on here? Uh, anyway, first one here is a mythic. Uh, Aetherworks Marvel. Looks like Foundry of the Consoles. Um, four mana for a legendary mythic artifact. All right. <laughs> Whenever a permanent you control is put into a graveyard, you get an energy counter. Okay. So this little zappy counter is an energy counter. So whenever a permanent is put into your graveyard, whenever a permanent you control is put into a graveyard, you get an energy counter. And tap it, pay six energy counters. Look at the top six cards of your library. You may cast a card from among them without paying its mana cost. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So... Um, do energy counters go on the permanent? You get an energy counter. Not put an energy counter on Aetherworks Marvel. So I'm assuming that means um, it's like um, experience counters. So you'll get energy counters and you'll be able to use them as a cost to um, pay for different types of cards. So pretty interesting. It's like an alternative to mana. Cards will give you energy counters and you'll use those energy counters to activate certain effects. If there's like a mass way to get energy counters, and this already seems pretty good. Permanents go to the graveyard all the time. Um, think about like, you know, cracking a land like Evolving Wilds. That's putting a permanent into the graveyard, getting an energy counter. This also seems pretty neat because I'm assuming there are other counter or other cards that will use energy counters, and you can use a card like this to mass a mass energy counters, and then probably pay for other spells this way. This is really neat. Um, it's like a, a counter that's designated to you, so like poison counters, experience counters. So I don't know if it can be tinkered with or not yet, but we'll see. Um, that's just the very first card here, starting off with a bang with the Mythics. But uh, our Planeswalker, everybody predicted, you know, red-blue. Um, Sahili Rai, I hope I'm saying that right. I don't really know. Um, Sahili Rai is one, one, a blue and a red for a three um, loyalty Planeswalker. Um, we've been getting a lot of those lately. Lots of three mana blockers. Um, probably a little more difficult with a dual-colored one. I think Ashiok might have been the last dual-colored one. But um, we've had a lot of three mana walkers. So the plus one is 
Scry 1, Sahili Rai deals 1 damage to each opponent. That's okay. That's not super exciting, but it's pretty good. Um, doesn't draw you a card, and the 1 damage is like, okay, it's kind of like a Chandra ability. Um, minus 2, create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. That token gains haste, exile it at the beginning of the next end step. So um, if you've ever played Felden um, in Commander, this is very similar, except I guess it has to target a creature you control instead of a creature in your graveyard. So it basically lets you make copies of creatures, but they are uh, temporary copies. Pretty neat. Minus two is not like super crazy. Uh, so this can come down and do that and still have loyalty left over to start ticking up. And then minus seven, search your library for up to three artifact cards with different names, then put them on the battlefield and shuffle your library. All right, that's pretty neat. Like, <laughs> I really, really wish this could go into ready, but it can't um, because of the blue. And we still don't have a legendary uh, creature that really cares about you know blue-red artifacts. So I don't know. I, I'm, I don't know that this... One is as powerful as some of the other three mana walkers we've been getting, like Nyssa and um, Liliana most recently. But it seems neat, and um, if there's any use for that having an additional artifact creature from the minus two ability, then that's fine. The plus one is just not super exciting. Being able to scry every turn is great, but the one extra damage is like, okay, um, if you can protect her or you know, blue-red has a lot of control elements to it in this set, then that one extra damage does add up, but... Overall, I think this is, I don't want to say it, <laughs> um, maybe underwhelming, but um, I've learned my lesson about underrating three mana walkers, so we'll, I'll just have to reserve my opinion about it right now and just wait until I see a little bit more. But moving on to this, <laughs> this vehicle here, the, the artifact creature type is vehicle. Um, I, I, I'm not even going to click the comments. I'm sure people are like, oh, magic is ruined. There's cars and magic. But um, this is a 4-mana 6-1 uh, oval chase dragster. Okay. Um, so a 6-1 with trample and haste and crew 1. <laughs> okay. Uh, it has crew 1. Tap any number of creatures you control with total power 1 or more. This vehicle becomes an artifact creature until end of turn. Uh... So is it not a... Okay, so it's not a creature until you use the crew ability. Tap any number of creatures you control with total power, one or more. So um, basically just tap a creature that has power and that turns Oval Chase Dragster into a creature for the turn. Actually, if I'm processing this right, this is pretty neat. So um, the way I'm reading it is it comes down and it's just an artifact that doesn't do anything... Um, but it has the crew ability where you can tap a one power creature or basically any creature that has any amount of power and this will become a creature until end of turn. So you use it when it ha when your opponent has an opening as like a really big hitter. Um, seems pretty neat. I, <laughs> it's just I wasn't expecting a vehicle artifact type here, so I don't really know what to think. The, the border looks neat. Like... Sure. <laughs> um, crew is kind of like a, I don't know, it seems like a silly mechanic, but I get what they're going for here. So you're, you're piloting it, right? We're talking about, uh, what do they call it? Um, pod, pod racers from Star Wars. Um, so you, you put a crew member in the, <laughs> in the spot and uh, suddenly it's a creature. It has like mobility and I don't know. It's a pretty, pretty neat idea. I like the flavor on it now that I'm like thinking about it. And six power trample haste is pretty strong, so that's going to deal some serious damage. Notice this isn't like other creatures where uh, you have to sacrifice that end of turn, but it does stop being a creature at end of turn. You can use it as like a surprise blocker, or um, you know, once your opponent's open, just smash them. But <laughs> really interesting idea. Um, new mechanic looks like over here fabricate. So propeller pioneer <clears throat> is. Three and a white for a 2-1 human artificer at common with flying. And Fabricate says when this creature enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter on it or create a 1-1 colorless servo artifact creature token. All right, uh, put a 1-1 counter on it. All right, so um, there was a cycle of cards in Fate Reforged, the, um, all commons where... 
they could come down and you could either put a 1-1 one, one counter on them or you could do some additional effect and that's kind of what I'm getting with Fabricate here. So I'm assuming if it has like Fabricate 3, you can either put 3 1-1 one, one counters on it or make a 3-3 three, three colorless or probably 3-1-1, one, one, something like that. Um, if all it did was a counter or a 1-1, one, one, it wouldn't be Fabricate 1, it would just be Fabricate. So um, this probably scales, probably some green creature with Fabricate 6 because <laughs> the lucky number 6 for some random card in every set. But I don't know, it's pretty neat. This card overall is okay. Um, you can make it a 4-mana 3-2 flyer, which is pretty decent. Um, think of like Cloud Manta or... Um, um, aberrant researcher from the most recent sets. Um, three, two flyers for four are perfectly fine. And the fact that you can split this up and make it like, um, a two, one flyer in addition to another creature is sweet. It's like, um, Eldrazi Sky Spawner essentially for one more mana. Probably not as good as Sky Spawner, but you get the idea. So pretty neat. Fabricate seems nice. Um, I'm saying um a lot because I'm processing while I'm speaking, but anyway. Moving on, Furious Reprisal, 3 and a red for an uncommon sorcery. Furious Reprisal deals 2 damage to each of 2 target creatures and or players. That's not bad. That actually seems really strong. Um, it is sorcery speed, so you got to time it right, but the fact that you can shock a player, shock an opponent's creature, or just kill 2 creatures with this seems really nice. There's a lot of flex flexibility there. Um, so yeah, that's what we've got. Actually, um, I do want to go ahead and... Just go to Magic Spoiler, because that's where I saw the spoilers, and then I went back to Mythic Spoiler. But there was a token here, the 1-1 one, one Servo token, um, that we just go ahead and bring up. So pretty neat art there. That looks really cool. doesn't have any special anything you need to know about, but it's just a neat little 1-1 one, one there. So... I don't know, that, a lot of pretty interesting stuff here. So these charge counters is something new that players are going to have to get used to. Um... The, this vehicle thing has just got me like I don't even know what to think about it and fabricate that seems like a neat ability um, maybe not like the coolest in the world but I get the idea behind it sorry I didn't mean to zoom there but this is pretty interesting start um, it's definitely got my attention you can tell like just I, I like the feel of this set so far a lot of mechanical stuff a lot of um, color to it it's a really um, sharp transition coming out of Eldritch Moon and Shadows over Innistrad where everything's dark and gloomy so I like the direction we're going with it obviously I'm going to wait to uh, reserve my opinion about it until it comes out and I have you know a full look at it in the draft environment and the standard environment but it's pretty cool one thing I'm wondering here um, it's, it seems very likely that we'll get a Chandra card in this set just because it is her uh, homeworld and everything but are we going to get a, a red walker and a red blue walker in the same set? I don't really know what to think about that. It is possible with the um, those new, um, I forget what they call them, but the planeswalker decks that are going to start coming out with Kaladesh that like they reserve Chandra for that. But that seems unlikely. If we're going to her home world, then, you know, um, we should probably get a card for her. And, uh, you know, she's been mono red forever. So very unlikely that she'll switch into any other color combination. But I don't know. I've been proven wrong before. A couple other things before I let you guys go. Um, if you haven't, check out the uh, announcement page <clears throat> that came up about two days ago. Uh, we do have a new plane coming up um, after Kaladesh. That is Amonket. Uh, so if you haven't seen this yet, it's pretty sweet looking. Uh, obviously an Egyptian feel to it. Um, so I, I think magic is intentionally trying to, uh, or wizards are intentionally trying to, um, incorporate more ethnicities and more, um, backgrounds and more, uh, races into it. Cause, uh, the Sahili is obviously like Indian and, um, uh, Amonkhet is just an Egyptian feel. So, uh, kudos to them for that. Uh, and also with Kaya being the first African American, Planeswalker, I believe the first one. Just pretty neat that they're incorporating. But anyway, back to Amonkhet. Um, we know this comes out, I think, April. Maybe correct me if I'm wrong. But Nicol Bolas is confirmed here. Uh, pretty neat. This is all we have so far is this little spoiler picture and maybe a little blurb off of another site. But I'll let you look it up on your own and let me know your thoughts and opinions about Amonkhet. Seems like it's going to be a, 
top-down based set kind of like Theros was so maybe some Egyptian mythos sorry I don't know my Egyptian mythos as well as I do my Greek so uh, I don't know really what to expect from it yet but obviously we're focusing on Kaladesh right now and I'm super happy to see some spoilers coming out I've been waiting for it a while PAX East I believe just happened or is happening this weekend so that's where we're getting these cards from and hopefully we get a couple more the set drops on the 24th for pre-release or 23rd I believe is the Friday um, that leads up to the midnight pre-release so the set's only about three weeks away and um, that means spoiler season should officially start on Monday so we'll be seeing a lot more I'll be making these videos hopefully we don't get a huge leak like we did with conspiracy so that I don't have to make really long videos because it's more interesting to do them in little groups but anyway uh, crew one <laughs> so, so Gather the crew together because we need to pilot these vehicles. Anyway, um, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for taking a couple minutes out of your day to look at these with me. Um, I'm super excited and I hope you are too. Let me know what you think. Uh, my name is Timothy and I will see you guys next time.